What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here. Welcome back to yet another video. And today is a special video where we're gonna, well, we're, well, we're, wow, that, wow. Today's a special video because we are going to be discussing together how to film a conversation with yourself. And what do I, what do I, what do I mean by that? Hey, for example, uh, are we gonna use just the one light? Yeah, I figured we just, is that enough? We just share okay. the one light. Well, the fall, just, I'm just getting the fall off. Yeah, it should be fine. Just come a little bit, come a little bit oh. closer there so that we can, just there's only one mic. Good? Yeah. The magic. It should be revealed. It should be fun. Move along. Move along. Move along. Okay, we'll get we'll get back to it. We'll get back to it. That's what's happening today. All right, welcome back. So today is a fun topic and it's something I've wanted to discuss for a while because it's something that it, it's fun to do. I enjoy the process of filming conversations apparently with myself. Now, you know, it's obviously just me playing both sides if you didn't. <laughs> so you guys have met Squarespace Pete. You know that I use that kind of twin and myself and I play both sides to do all the advertising for Squarespace, which by the way, this episode is sponsored by Squarespace. <laughs> but I've also done it before in other little skits and things and videos in the past. And I figured I have, since I've been doing it for a while, there's probably some tips that I can share with you. If you ever wanted to do something similar or experiment around with basically filming two versions of yourself having a conversation at the same time for whatever reason. It's just, it's might be a handy skill to have at some point. I don't know. So I put together five tips that'll help you filming and we're gonna go through how we actually do it and things to look out for and little subtleties that make a huge difference to make those scenes actually feel like they're happening. Cause there's a lot of things that you can do that are wrong that'll instantly make it cringy, awkward, not flow, and it just doesn't work at all. I really wanna have a fifth point for that because that bothers me. So let's start with point number one, L cuts and J cuts. Having your audio between the two people, A and B, overlap. As an example. Hey, hey, what's up? Not much. Cool. Yep. We're talking about L cuts and J cuts today. Oh, overlapping and not overlapping audio for tip number one. All right, yeah. So making sure that your dialogue points overlap with your other subjects' dialogue points, be it that you're having a conversation with yourself or it's another character that you're playing, is really important to keep it feeling natural, specifically using L cuts and J cuts. So while one person's audio track is going, the other person's audio track starts before the other audio track finishes. So if A and B are having a conversation with each other and A is speaking, you don't necessarily have to put the camera on B while B is speaking. You can still have B speaking while the camera is on A. That's what makes the conversation flow. Now, if that's hard to make sense of, let me just give you a super fast demonstration. Let's do this again. Hey, what's up, man? What's going on, man? How's it going? You gonna hop out on the ski this weekend? Yeah, I hope get to. Some, get some hours in? You're looking good. Thanks, man. I think so. Complexion, trying to just <laughs> get them raised. Keep it up. Yeah. That's probably, that's enough. Okay. Why? <laughs> the hardest part of this video is putting this jacket on. Okay. <laughs> this is so much work. I hope people like this. <laughs> so you'll know. <laughs> uh. So you'll notice with that example, the L cuts and J cuts, you're not always listening to the audio of the person that you're looking at on camera. You gonna hop out on the ski this weekend? Yeah, I hope to. Get some, get some hours in? You're looking good. Thanks, man. I think so. Complexion, <laughs> trying to just... The audio tracks are overlapping, one starting before the other's finished, and it makes that conversation more cohesive. It makes it feel more real. That's what sells it. So keep that in mind. That's point number one. That was long and overdrawn, but it's probably one of the most important points to make this feel not cringy. Number two is sight lines. Now, when you're having this conversation with yourself or whatever character yourself is playing, you wanna make sure that you're looking in the same spot where that character is gonna be sitting when you're having that conversation. If I'm looking at a character that's seemingly sitting right here, I wanna be looking where I think that person is going to be sitting. I don't wanna be looking like this and having a conversation like this while the person on this side is having a conversation looking this way. So if I'm looking this way, 
and I'm looking this way, it's clear that these are two different cuts that are just, they're not meshing with each other. You wanna be looking in the direction where that person's going to be sitting for a conversation. Simple as that. So tip number three is to have basically three angles of the conversation. You wanna have a wide, then you wanna have a close up on subject A and a close up on subject B or whatever. That way you have something to cut to if you make a mistake in the wide. Because this conversation isn't happening at the same time, you have to kind of finagle it together to make it feel like it's happening at the same time, like it makes sense. And that's hard to do if you didn't remember what you said and then you're filming the other half and you forgot and you've only got these two angles, it's hard to finagle it. It's hard to massage it into something that actually works. So you can use the punch in of A to cover mistakes from B. You can move across to a reaction from this camera to this camera to this camera while this person's speaking and this person's speaking. It really helps make it feel cohesive. Now, if you're shooting in 4K, you don't need to have those extra angles because you've got that extra resolution. You can just crop in to one side or the other and those act as extra camera angles. That's obviously one of the biggest benefits when you're shooting in higher resolution cameras. Those angles are helping cover mistakes and make the conversation feel more like it's actually happening. Point number four is filming filler shots and dummy shots to use for mistakes or just to help you fill in the gaps. Sometimes when you're on set or you're filming with a crew or someone's mic or you have a mic going, you'll get something called room tone. It's 30 seconds of just whatever the room sounds like. So if someone makes a mistake in their lines or you wanna cover something up, you have the same tone of the room, you have 30 seconds of that clean. Now we do the same thing when we're filming these conversations with both A character and B character so we can cut those in in case the conversation doesn't make sense when you film it from both sides or if you need a pause or you need something to fix it, you've got those dummy filler shots, kind of like your room tone. So as an example, I would film maybe just a couple seconds of something like this. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Wow. So just an amalgamation of me listening, reacting to something, maybe saying yes, maybe saying no, having a reaction, wow. Those types of things from both sides, I would do it again from the other character, that way while this person's talking, if this person makes a mistake, we can cut into one of those dummy shots of this character reacting and that stuff really helps craft this conversation together. I know this is a very obscure topic, but it's really fun and if you haven't done it at all ever, you should probably you should probably try it because it's uh it's a lot of fun. Now I know this can be confusing. I would recommend watching it again if it is, but all the tips in here make perfect sense so that you'll have a more cohesive conversation so that you'll have a more cohesive conversation when you're actually trying to film a conversation with yourself. Are we doing this? Is it Can I do it now? Well, you've already like it's Oh, you can hear that? You're slurping away on that. You may as well. I didn't think you could hear that. Yeah, I thought it loud. Was... Yeah, can you hear it? Dude, you got to wait for his cue. We've never never waited for a cue. Can I do it now? Yeah, just do it. Do I sit beside you? Or? Just do it. I'll wait. I'll wait. Just from here? This is, yeah, go for it. Okay. Hey, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Does anyone at this point not know what Squarespace is? Who doesn't know? It's the only place you should ever go for a website. Okay, it's an all-in-one platform. Everything you could possibly ever need for a website is done in one place. Domains, customer service, templates, change up the look of store, sell things, portfolio. Literally, you can literally do all of it. You need a place online. It's your online home. It's your business card to the digital realm. Ooh, write that down. That was good. Squarespace.com slash McKinnon at checkout saves you 10%. On, okay, yeah, we got it. We're good. Should I wrap? Okay. Yeah, no, that was I'm a good sorry. read. I'm, yeah, I'm going. Links are in the description. Okay. Squarespace.com. Nice. Thank you. Pull up. Nice shirt, too. It's okay. interesting. Summer edition. Okay. <laughs> all right, moving on to point number five. Point number five, and arguably the most important point. Now this is how you're actually going to have a conversation with yourself and, and have it line up. When I first started, I was trying to figure out how I would do this. So what I would actually do is have a one-sided conversation where I obviously would just keep in mind what I wanted the conversation to sound like. And as I was thinking about it, I would just deliver one side. So let's just say I was gonna have an argument with someone about eating a bag of chips. You, you ate the whole bag. 
No, I didn't even, no, 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 wait, wait. I bought like a full box. You just went, no, no, can I finish? I bought a full box. You ate, I didn't even get like one bag, dude. I'm, and I'm fine if you eat all of them, just like save me one or maybe just buy a box yourself. Now I would remember that one half and when I filmed the other side of it, I would try to remember what that first half was and it was really difficult. Cause I'd be like, okay, I was talking about him eating a bag of chips. Then I would try to reenact it by remembering what the first conversation was and it was hard to do. You would think, no, I, I, I was hungry. I didn't eat them all. I know, okay. okay. I, I didn't eat the whole box, like nine bags. Maybe, and you, okay. I would buy a box, but you're always buying them. So I'm trying to react to the first version of the conversation, that's hard. Now I'm doing this for the past two years with Squarespace Pete and other things, I've been able to basically develop that skill where I can remember the first half of the conversation and react to that by having another half of the conversation, which is hard. But when I first started, I couldn't do it. So what I would do is I'd film the first half of that conversation on camera. I'd export it, open up the video file, connect my AirPods, and I would put one side of an AirPod in, and I would turn this way so you couldn't actually see the AirPod in. At the time I had long hair too, so I didn't even have to worry about which way I was gonna turn. And then I would play the video on my laptop, and I would hear that video saying, you ate the whole bag of chips. And then I would respond in time. I didn't even know, and then I would hear the conversation in my ear. So it was super easy to follow along and have that timing make sense. Now as things progressed, it just became more of a hassle to do it this way and I just learned to remember it. Now it doesn't always flow perfectly, which is why we revert to the other points by having dummy clips and filler clips and having different shots and different angles to cut to, to make up for that not being absolutely perfect. So that's why the fifth point is the most important point of this entire series because it's the, it's arguably the hardest thing, it's the, it's the hardest thing to actually get a handle of. It's gonna take some time. Why are you not wearing a shirt? All right guys, so that is five points. We'll do one bonus tip, which is it's easy to wear different outfits. If you're wearing a different outfit for character A and character B, it's very easy for your audience to differentiate what's happening. There's a conversation happening, you're playing a character, etc. If you're having a conversation with yourself in the same outfit, it's a little more confusing. I guess it depends on the dialogue, but I've often found that setting up a character that has a very different wardrobe on, like you saw today with Squarespace Pete and the Hawaiian shirt and the glasses and the backwards hat, I even had a different watch on, took the rings off, all those things help make it make more sense. I've also gone as far as to develop a personality for this separate character. Squarespace Pete at this point could have his own channel. It's not a bad idea. That's what's made it easy to follow and fun to watch. So, those are my like six obscure tips on how to film a conversation with yourself. Someone out there will find this useful. If not, I hope you at least found it entertaining, but that is how I do it. Try it, you'll have fun with it. I know you will, and thank you for your time. That was very formal. That's it for me, guys. Hit the like button if you like this video. Smash it, bah! if that's something that you're into, 2020 style. Subscribe if you aren't already, and, and I will see you guys in the next video. How does Jared Poland do it? See ya. <laughs> okay, this is fun to edit. This isn't even mine. <laughs>